load of this. A brand new Wall Street Journal uh, poll shows former President Donald Trump is leading President Biden in all but one of the key swing states. Mark Meredith is at the White House with a look at the numbers. Hey, Mark. Ainsley, Steve, Brian, and Lawrence, good morning, friends. We are roughly seven months out until the presidential election, and there is some new polling that shows former President Trump is leading, leading President Biden in six of these seven swing states. Let me give you an idea of what we're talking about. The Wall Street Journal taking a look at these different samples. In Pennsylvania, for instance, you've got Trump leading by three points. The state Trump won in 2016 but lost four years later. In Georgia, Trump only ahead by one point. We've seen both candidates hit the state within the last month. Nevada, Democrats have relied on in recent elections. Trump now leading by four points. Wisconsin, though, one swing state where Trump is not leading but simply tied with Biden. On Tuesday, Wisconsin held its primary. Both Trump and Biden, of course, won easily, but it is notable some 47,000 people chose to vote uninstructed, essentially a protest vote against President Biden. Also in the Badger State, we saw former President Trump in Green Bay overnight, where he went on the attack against President Biden's immigration policies. He also challenged the current commander in chief to an early debate. I stand before you today to declare the Joe Biden's border bloodbath, and that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. We have an empty podium right here to my right. You know what that is? That's for Joe Biden. I'm trying to get him to debate. I'm calling on Crooked Joe to debate anytime, any place. Now, the uh, former president has made these kind of comments before, and the Biden campaign in the past has kind of brushed them off as a stunt. We've reached out to see if they have any new reaction to Trump's comments overnight. The Biden campaign is also ready to pivot to another important issue, abortion. They've got new ads in battleground states on that issue. And guys, just yesterday, former President Trump said he's going to talk about it next week. So an indication that issue will be in the spotlight within a matter of days. <laughs> that is unbelievably creepy. Wow. Wow. I don't even want to know what movie that's from. <laughs> it's like, that is exactly, though, what is happening. Here we go. Time to take Biden out for another stroll. <laughs> it's like, it's like, he's so ready to lead the country. He's so ready. He's so such vigor, ladies and gentlemen. We have vigor. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Former corporate media reporter turns on Biden and reveals that during her interview with Biden, every single question was scripted. Ripping the mask and the bark off of your fake news media, Donald Trump, right again when he said fake news. Po new poll shows that Trump leads Biden in six of seven swing states. And Julie Kelly joins the show to talk about all of the interesting developments in the Trump legal cases. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. We stand for life on this program. We believe that life is obviously a gift from God and must be protected. If you gotta, gotta read any parts of the Gospels, and it's important that you read the Gospels, it's important that you're connected, right, with your Lord and Savior, Christ is King. It's really important that you, like, kind of focus in on some of the major takeaways from Christ's messages. And, and one of the really big ones, one of the really big ones, if you're just a simple Christian like me and you're like just reading the words of God is um, don't harm kids. Uh, gonna be bad for you if you harm kids. In fact, one time Christ says, uh, it'd be better if we take a giant rock, I don't have any giant rocks, but here, let's say, take the salt for this, for instance, wrap it around your neck and chuck you into the bottom of the ocean than for you to harm children. So you should take that very seriously, right? We should take these things seriously. That's why we're proud to partner with Preborn, ladies and gentlemen. Preborn is a spectacular organization that rescues babies. They do this 
by providing free ultrasounds for expectant mothers and also child care and an opportunity to obviously see the miracle of life as the uh, demonic left wishes to steal life. We wish to bring life onto this world and to protect the children. So please help us in protecting the children. Just dial pound 250 and say the word baby. Pound 250 and say the word baby to donate securely at preborn.com slash Benny. You can help save a life today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a uh, very interesting bit of breaking news this morning. It's all over our social media feeds that Joe Biden is fake, that the presidency is fake. That it's not real, ladies and gentlemen. That not, not, nothing about Joe Biden is real and that all of it has been a centralized and coordinated plan in order to trick you, in order to rig your democracy. All of the people that scream day and night till they're red in the face, but I'm a democracy. Those people, you have Hillary Clinton on uh, the news shows last night. She's on the late night show, right? Last night, super cringe, Jimmy Fallon appearance. And she says, Joe Biden's gonna win. I don't even know why we have to have an election. I'm paraphrasing, we'll play the clip for you. Hillary Clinton's like, I don't even want an election. Why do we even have to have these elections? They're so annoying. Why don't we just let AI decide, right? Well, I mean, quite literally, it's what, it's what they're heading towards. So they think that democracy is antiquated and they think that actually it should be the elites that get together and decide who's president and then they get to benefit, right? They get to con continue to strip mine this country and destroy this great place. It used to be a really great country. And that system is obviously led to the enrichment of a couple of very small, uh, worst families probably in the country the Bidens, the Clintons, the Pelosi's, and so on, and the destruction of the rest of our American dream. But that's the system they want because that's the system that gives them power. And they want to be able to effectively just push the button every time and get power, all right? They don't like the fact that they sometimes push the button and it goes bar, 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 and they lose. They don't like that. They don't like it. And part of the way that you rig a system, or what was the Time, what, what did Time Magazine write? Re reinforce democracy what what was the exact what was the exact phraseology of time they they reinforced the election right what was, what was that time magazine article where, they, where they, these evil people had to effectively like tell us what they did during the 2020 election fortify the election how long how long did they come up how long did it take them to come up with that fortify the election there you go so they fortified the election they did so by ensuring that nobody, not only could you not see bad information about Joe Biden, like the Hunter Biden laptop, right? Not only, could, and the biggest, the biggest crime actually, I think, is that we knew about the Hunter Biden laptop for a long time and nobody went public with it. Not we, it's not like I was keeping it from you, but the powers that be knew about this information and it had been leaked for, for like a year ahead of time. Like, why didn't they just come out with it? Why did they allow the social media censors and everybody to like tighten up. And why didn't we get like a full scale investigation? Like then you should have just come out with it, right? Let them answer these questions. But that the coil, that pipe, that coil, right? It, it wound so tightly around the necks of the all of us on social media, but even tighter still around the necks of reporters that dare ask Joe Biden questions. Now we have an example here. The breaking news of today is there is a corporate media reporter who did an interview with Joe Biden, a very, you know, a, a relatively long interview with Joe Biden. And she's out today saying everything was scripted. None of it's real. All of it's fake. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to like show you and reinforce this with a couple of important data points before we get into this story. All right. Number one, at the White House, on occasion, uh, you can see Joe Biden with a note card. He generally has like a stack of note cards printed off in size 48 font, big enough for a photographer who's generally, generally the photographers are seated pretty far away from the president, uh, big enough for the photographers to like snap a photo of what's on the card. And lo and behold, this is from about a year ago, lo and behold, actually it's from almost exactly a year ago. There you go. Nailed it. Okay, great. Fantastic. ALX AI moment. Uh, from a year ago, you have this card screenshotted of 
Joe Biden. So here's the actual, like, it's, it's clear enough to read. I think they're getting better at, like, I think they're getting better at, at actually hiding these these days. Look at it. In color and everything, right? Question number one. Reporter Q&A. This is the date. April 26, 2023. Courtney Surmanian. I actually need the pronunciation. Subramanian. Los Angeles Times. Circle. Los Angeles Times. All right. Foreign policy, semiconductor manufacturing. How are you squaring your domestic policies like reshoring semi um, uh, semiconductor manufacturing with allied foreign policy? Notice how the, the <laughs> notice how it's written in the form of a question. So what this means is that Joe Biden is given the questions ahead of time by the corporate media simps who are there at the White House in order to rig elections. The media is involved. The media is a player in all of this. It is why the work that we're doing is so important. It is why we're so thankful for you. It is why we're so thankful for ev like for, for what we're building here. Because I got to tell you, there's, you know, <laughs> I have no doubt they, they've, they've come to cancel me a million times. They've like, they, they're, they're, they're always, they're always like, you know, they're, they're, they're always coming at every person that has like a platform or that speaks freely. Every one of them, right? Whether it's Candace Tucker, you know, fill up the list. But I'm telling you, like, the one thing they'll never get me on is uh, here's a list of questions ahead of time that I will give to you. Person. We do a lot of interviews on the show. We do interviews with big time, powerful people. Some people that are like relatively adversarial, right? Some people that we agree with, some people we don't agree with. Some people that really need to be pressed on some issues. I promise you that never never is like a list of questions given ahead of time. Yet here we have the photo of the actual question <laughs> given to Joe Biden. And I sure as shooting, guess what happened? Man, they, I, should, I should, I'd make a fortune. They're, I should start betting on this. I should start betting. I should start bets, right? As to who's going to get the first question at the White House with Joe Biden. All you have to do is read his damn note cards. They give Joe Biden the questions ahead of time. And what happened here? Well, Joe Biden asked the damn question. She, he was asked the damn question. I mean, it's incredible. So here he is calling on the reporter. Now we're going to take some questions. The first question is from Courtney of the Los Angeles Times. Thank you, Mr. President. Your top economic priority has been to build up U.S. domestic manufacturing in competition with China. But your rules against, against expanding chip manufacturing in China is hurting South Korean companies that rely heavily on Beijing. Are you damaging a key ally in the competition with China to help your domestic politics ahead of the election? No. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Look. I mean, it's about as close as word for word as you can get. How are you squaring your domestic priorities with semiconductor manufacturing foreign policies and the friction around China, you can like see, you can make out the question right there. They gave him the damn question. And then she asked, she asked, some people are, some people said online at the time, well, it wasn't word for word. Are you kidding? Are you? Remember the time when Trump would like walk out, would like, would like puff, puff up, puff up his trench coat and then say, I gotta go talk to the fake news. And he'd walk over there and there'd be like a wall of reporters 50 feet high and deep. And he'd just be like, all right, what you got for me? And they just start peppering him with questions. He'd do that for an hour. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that this is obviously what happens. And even still, even still, with this manufactured, artificial, total marionette meat puppet operation they got with Joe Biden, he still Fs the thing up day and night, right? He still can cannot c deliver an answer. He still screws it up. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, like, for instance, a couple of examples of that. But let's jump into our first story, okay, before we like go in hard on how bad, how bad Joe Biden actually is on this. So Sage Steele is the former ESPN reporter who has come out effectively this morning and said, my interview with Joe Biden 
that she did for Sports Center, right? Big time operation, big corporate media operation with ABC News, right? Owned by ABC, which is owned by Disney, which is the biggest media company on earth. The worst, but also the biggest media company on earth, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she says that, nope, everything that I did was entirely scripted. The interview was scripted. They told me, my bosses told me what the questions were going to be. And Joe Biden knew what those questions were ahead of time. Now, this was during the 2020 election, ladies and gentlemen. So here they are trying to effectively rig the election. I'm sorry, correction. 2021 interview, Joe Biden was just, just uh, installed as president of the White House. Former ESPN host Sage Steele reveals 2021 interview with President Biden was scripted by network executives. In an interview with Fox News Digital, Steele recalled the structured nature of the pre-taped interview. So much so that her ESPN bosses handed her a script to go off of. Let's watch. This was about two months after he took office. Um, that was an interesting experience in its own right because it was so structured and I was told you will say every word that we write out. You will not deviate from the script and go to the word. Like every single question was scripted, gone over dozens of times by many executives, editors and executives. Absolutely. I was on script and was told not to deviate because it was very much, this is what you will ask. This is how you will say it. Um, no follow-ups. No follow-ups next. I knew that this was a lot bigger than just the wonderful editors that I worked with. This went up to the fourth floor, as we said, that we're all the, the bosses, the top executives, the decision makers are the president where, of our company, the CEO, where, where they all worked. So this was uh, a interview that was done about sports leagues restoring normalcy during COVID. I mean, this was, this wasn't something, this wasn't some type of hard hitting, like this wasn't some type of like harsh meeting with Vladimir Putin, NATO summit thing, right? Like this, this wasn't some type of massive G20, like harsh economic, like back and forth. Like inter This was about major league baseball. I mean, th this was, this was an, an interview, like a cutesy interview about sports. Uh, I'm obviously not trying to downplay Sage Seals uh, reporting here or what she does professionally. She's awesome. Uh, but this was not some type of like massive. What's the right way to say this? D the president always gets talking points, right? Given the topic. But this wasn't some type of like massive international terrorism economic fallout situation, Russia, Ukraine, war. This wasn't that. They were talking about sports. And Joe Biden was given effectively every question in advance to talk about sports. Like, like truly, unbelievably remarkable. How do his loved ones allow this? How do they do it? How do they do it? Like, at what point? Do we bring the charges, the true federal charges that need to be brought, which is the elder abuse charge against Joe Biden? Like, at what point do you say, enough? How do loved ones allow this? Take it away, Sage. The big picture to me is that I think it's heartbreaking. I think it's really heartbreaking that the people who love Joe Biden and say they truly care about him have allowed it to get to this point. So I'm not even looking at this from a political angle or my beliefs in anything. This is the human side of it. And when someone is struggling, um, we allow them to continue to be in the spotlight and put them out there in the first place when they knew there were issues, of course they had to know. So it's, it, it's, a, it's a humanity thing with me where I don't care where anyone stands and what they vote in for or who they believe in. Do you really care about that person? as a father, as a husband, as a everything. Yeah, exactly. Do you care about that person, right? And you can see it clear as day. Jill, Bi Jill Biden's guilty. Hey, Alex, do we have the Jill Biden clips in the script? 
I want to jump to that because we have Jill Biden. Jill Biden had meltdown today uh, on morning on, on a morning show, which was so cringy. Hey, Alex, we got that. Uh, yeah, where are where are they in the script? Because I want to jump to that because it's like amazing how guilty people are when you start to ask when you start to ask this kind of stuff. Like so, so Jill Biden was asked this morning. Since 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 Sage Steele is talking about elder abuse, let's go to the person who's actually abusing uh, Joe Biden. We're going to cover uh, the polls later on in the show because the polls are again, once again, devastating for Joe Biden, and new polls are newly devastating for Joe Biden. Meanwhile, uh, Donald Trump is raising record amounts of cash, and that's before uh, what I hear is going to be the biggest fundraising event ever with a ton of billionaires that Donald Trump's setting up, very exclusive event uh, that will probably blow Joe Biden's embarrassing Lizzo event out of the water. Puns intended all around. But Jill Biden, you can always like you can always tell, right, when you when you do enough of these, and I do all these live interviews, I do live interviews every single day, you can always tell when someone's lying. You can tell because you can see it in sort of their the way they carry themselves and the way they talk in the way they get like deeply offended or rigid all of a sudden, right? The way, the, the way they like stare off in the middle distance, it's kind of like they're like human tells to when somebody is lying or guilty about something, right? The sweat, it's why a lie detector generally tends to work, right? The sweat, the raised heart rate, the anger, the brittleness, the bristling. Is Jill Biden guilty of elder abuse? Well, Jill Biden was asked this morning uh, hey, you know, you like this, this, we don't, all of us don't like Trump, right? She's on this corporate media morning show. I think it's, I think it's CBS. All, none of us like Trump. Um, yeah, she's on CBS, but yo, like you're like, like Joe Biden's losing to Trump in all these battleground states. And really the election is decided by like seven states, call them the magnificent seven. And Joe Biden's losing in every single state to Trump. So it's like fine that Joe Biden's popular in New York and California, but we actually need the middle of the road states here and they're like, they're all collapsing. And watch Jill Biden's response, okay? Tell me something. Like one, does this sound like the response of somebody that believes there's gonna be a fair election? And two, does this sound like the response of someone who's not guilty of elder abuse, watch. But when these polls like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. That... No, he's not losing in all the battleground all but one. states. He's coming up and he's um, uh, even or doing better. So, mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. He's not. He's not doing it. Right. Like, how do, how do you know? How do you know a liar? When you call them out on their lie and they start like screaming and they start screaming at you, right? When they start, you can see it, right? Jill Biden, like and she's done this before. One time she was asked on live on camera if Joe Biden needs a cognitive test. Check this out. Nikki Haley, one of the Republican candidates, is calling for mental competency tests for those politicians over the age of 75. What do you That's think ridiculous. about that? Ridiculous. Would your husband ever take one of those? I mean, we haven't even discussed. We would never even discuss something like that. You can't discuss it because Joe Biden doesn't speak or understand English. That's why you can't discuss it. I mean, it's kind of a genius answer, actually, by Jill Biden. D ed education, ed d Dr. Jill. Where does Jill Biden teach? Where's her class? She talks a lot about her students. Where is her class exactly? Where does Jill Biden teach? Can I sign up for it? She, all the time, she talks about her students this and her students that. Where does she teach? Nobody's ever told me. Shouldn't be hard. There are very few secret classes. Like, where does, where's Jill, where, where's Jill Biden's course? Dr. Biden. Well, Dr. Biden, um, do you have any prescription for your husband? Once again, Jill Biden asked by her best friends over at Morning Joe, like, sh like your, your husband clearly has dementia. Why is he running for president? Your husband is 81. At the end of the second term, he'd be 86. As his life partner of 46 years, is there a part of you that is worried about his age and health? Can he do it? He can do it. And I see Joe every day. I see him out, you know, traveling around this country. I see his vigor. I see his energy. I see his passion.
a truly demoralized person, right, will like deny reality even when it's right in front of their face. And that's what you have. Jill Biden should be prosecuted for elder abuse. And you can, when you see interviews with Jill Biden and Joe Biden together, that's when you really know. That's when you can truly understand that Jill knows. You can see it in her eyes, right? And I don't know, do we have the full New Year's Eve interview? This is this is the one that really, this is the one that really gets me. This is the one that like, it almost rips your heart out. How evil, the mendacity of this woman. There's this like, if you could even get a softer ball interview, then like, let's talk about baseball, right? On ESPN, the softest ball interview you can get is New Year's Eve, talking about literally soft balls, ice cream, right? Soft scoops of ice cream with Ryan Seacrest, the Bidens phoning in from whatever little Epstein Island vacation they were on. They're on some private island, the Caribbean, phoning in an interview with Ryan Seacrest with Jill Biden, who's wearing a bedazzled trash bag, talking to Ryan Seacrest, uh, not incapable of answering the basic questions like, what are you eating? Like, these are questions that would be asked um, for proof of life right? During activity hour at the nursing home in the hospice center. What, what have you eaten? Hey, hello, McFly. What are you eating? And Joe Biden's unable, like in his, he looks like a, by the way, he looks like a Krispy Kreme donut here. It's, it's really remarkable. So Jill Biden's in a bedazzled trash bag looking just like Alice Cooper. Joe Biden looks like one of those Krispy Kreme donuts that just came out of the little rack thing, Krispy Kreme. I don't know what they what they pump into this guy. It looks like he has been laying face down in salt water, being stung by those little puffer fishes all day, right in his face. Joe Biden, he doesn't even look like Joe Biden. So whichever Joe Biden this is, number seven, I think, um, gets trotted out, gets fitted, right, uh, with whatever thing they put on his skin. And he's just sitting there like, I, I mean, total vegetable. And Jill Biden, watch this. I mean, it's really remarkable. It's not a long interview. It's not a long interview. It's a pre-tape interview, by the way. Ryan Seacrest lies and says, look at all these people. You can see there's no one there. It's a pre-tape interview. Be like, it's not live. It's not happening live. It's just a trick. It's a trick. Of, it's a played trick on ABC News, again, on ABC. And they're trying to make you think that this is a live interview. It's not. It's a pre-tape. And Joe Biden can't even answer these questions. When Joe Biden's given an opportunity to ask what he wants for the new year, like what, what's his, what's his outlook for the new year? He has, you know what? I travel the country and everyone's losing their jobs. And you know what? That's just something I think about and they're losing their jobs and that's it. And you're like, what the, like, you can see Jill, you can see like watch her. You can see Jill be like, ah, ah, cause she knows, right? She knows and these people are demons. They're evil. They're evil. Okay. Here it is. Welcome back to New Year's Rockin' E, presented by Amazon Prime. It is Ryan Seacrest with you, and we're so honored that joining us right now are two very special guests, President Joe Biden and Dr. Jill Biden. It's nice to see you once again. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Ryan. Happy New Year. Thanks for having us. Uh, Mr. President, before we <laughs> start here about the new year, I'm curious, what sort of holiday foods have you been enjoying over the last few days? Well, I've been eating them. everything that's put in front of me. But I've eaten <laughs> pasta, which I love. Yeah. Eating a lot of chicken, chicken parmesan. I've been eating all, all Italian foods, basically. And ice cream. And ice cream, chocolate chip ice cream. It's good to know that you're eating <clears throat> like the rest of us here across the country. As you look back and reflect on 2023, what sort of, of memories, highlights stand out for you? Well, one of the big highlights stands out for me is my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, Joey, your job's about a lot more than the paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. So many people through the Midwest and, and in the center of the country, their, their factories are shipped overseas the last couple of times out, and, and they were losing hope and faith. So we brought a lot of jobs back to the United States. People are in a position to be able to make a living now, and uh, they've created a lot of jobs, over 14 million. And uh, I guess when I'm, I, I just feel good that the American people got up. They've been through a rough time with pandemic, but now we're coming back. They're back. 
Well, we've got a million plus people here in Times Square and so many eyes on the big ball Whoa. for the big moment tonight as we get ready for 2024. Uh -huh. What are your hopes for the new year for both of you? Well, my hope is that everybody has a healthy, happy and safe new year. But beyond that, I hope that they're, they understand that we're in a better position than any country in the world to lead the world. And we're coming back and it's about time. Dr. Biden, your hopes for America. Well, you know, I think it's what I would always tell my students. Be positive, be optimistic, and be kind to one another. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Enjoy two scoops of ice cream tonight, both of you. Thanks for coming on. We'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. <Thanks>. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Low-key based Ryan Seacrest uh, making a Trump joke, right? The two scoops. Remember two scoops? Trump gets two scoops. Yeah. Really? Is Ryan Seacrest low-key based? Could you imagine having to do that interview? Qu so quickly thereafter, Jill Biden went and uh, did a photo shoot for Vogue, and it turned out great, really. it's We're, we're like really excited about Jill Biden. Um, we were also, we've also have, we have a uh, incredible bit of reporting behind the scenes. This dress that Jill Biden was wearing during that interview, uh, our sources tell us that what happened was that effectively they left Hunter Biden um, with one of the bags of cocaine that they found in the White House, and they locked him in a room with a, one of those heavy-duty black trash bags and a bedazzler and a pair of scissors, but the kind of scissors that you'd give like a child, right? The plastic ones, okay? And they said, go, right? Like, Hunter, this is your new art project. We know you're an artist now. Bedazzler, uh, heavy duty tra black trash bag, uh, bedazzler, uh, cocaine, pair of plastic uh, scissors. Go. And this is what he came up with. And they're very proud, right? Jill's very, Jill's very supportive of her family. And they decided that this was really a great look. Meanwhile, Joe, um, as you can see here, if you can zoom in a little bit, uh, you can see that Joe didn't do any of the cocaine, um, and instead, uh, Joe shoved his face into the back muffler of an 18-wheeler, I guess? That's what that expression would look like? An 18-wheeler that's doing a burnout on an icy road? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. And Joe, Joe, actually, the balloons look, the balloons look more lifelike and less plasticky and rubbery than Joe Biden and Jill. Are they are the balloons showing off there? I don't know. But Jill knows, right? Jill knows. Jill talked about her students there. We've never been able to find the class Jill teaches. Nobody's ever come forward saying I was a Jill Biden student. So apparently Jill Biden is about as fake as Joe Biden is about as fake as the interviews. We do have, however, um, exclusive footage of Jill Biden's day job. She's definitely not a teacher. Uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, we we're able to source this. So, oh, Joe Biden. Okay. <laughs> so say it with me. See, say Broadway. The future is ours. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I thought Biden couldn't pull a crowd. Look at that. I, I, I apologize. Okay, I apologize. I thought the Bidens couldn't pull a crowd. We've done a lot of reporting here, how nobody shows up at these Joe Biden events, but I've been proven wrong. What have... You got to admit when you're wrong, right? Got to admit when you're wrong. There it is. <laughs> okay. Ooh, it gets, it gets bad, ladies and gentlemen. It gets bad. The RNC is up saying on sort of the wake of all of this, why is Jill Biden doing interviews for Joe? Shouldn't Joe Biden be doing the morning shows? Is there any reason Biden himself can't do a live sit down interview? It's been 279 days since Joe Biden's last live interview. That's very interesting. No, we don't keep count like that. The RNC does. And we're, we are like, obviously as Laura Trump has taken over, and, the, and Michael Watley and the new RNC leadership has taken over. We're going to be using their stuff more often. We were, all, we were sort of boycotting the RNC under Rana, and now, now we're back, baby. So the RNC is saying that it's been uh, close to a year since Joe Biden did a live interview. And what happened during that last live interview? Well, the to the best of our knowledge, Joe Biden crapped his pants. 
We don't, we're not trying to make fun of them. We just have no other explanation. It's our job to like try and give you the best information we can. Marjorie Taylor Greene has been on this show saying that there's been reports of Joe Biden having adult accidents abroad. But the best that we can surmise here is that Joe Biden had a adult diaper incident on live TV. This was his last interview, and that's probably why he doesn't do live interviews anymore. I'll let you decide for yourself. This is near, The setup here is that Joe Biden's sitting down at MSNBC with a propagandist named Nicole Wallace, who's so funny and so cringeworthy, and she's like half of our cringe alerts. And Nicole Wallace is tr in the middle of asking him a question, like mid-question, and Joe Biden just, got, just goes, and just wanders off the, just wanders off camera while the cameras are live. Now I'm aware that the camera's live and I'm, ma I'm making a joke. I would never do this to you, obviously, because that's not what you do during a live hit. When you're live, there's a guy kind of inappropriate or rude, but Joe Biden uh, and the cameraman deserves an Academy Award for this because the cameraman does like this big pan out. So you can see Joe Biden just wobble off. He takes the microphone with him. The only explanation here is there was like an adult emergency. This is the best we can come up with. By the way, don't tell me that Joe Biden doesn't know what he's, Joe Biden's been doing news media hits since the 1970s in DC. So he's he's going on 60 years of knowing how to do media in DC. So don't tell me he like just didn't know what was going on. You decide. Here's the clip. Well, and, and the ones that didn't vote for your bills but run on them. So That's too. right. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. I appreciate it's great it. to have yeah. you. It's thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. It's a very exciting day around here. Um, we'll have reaction and analysis to everything we just heard. <laughs> What the hell? Like, what's the explanation? Has anybody ever like given an explanation? The guy in the middle of a question just goes, and like, and then the wobbles off. The cameraman, give the cameraman an award for capturing the Joe Biden wobble off the set. And and, and Nicole Wallace goes, don't go anywhere as <laughs> Joe Biden's walking behind her. <laughs> Ooh, man. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's bad, right? How bad does it get? It gets worse. And Joe Biden on Jimmy Kimmel is like trying to give an answer to a question. And his question is so neandering. I mean, this again, this is Jimmy Kimmel. So what have we covered here? We've covered paid propaganda, paid like literal prop toe sucking propagandist. Uh, like somebody who wraps Biden's bunions on MSNBC, he can't stand for that. He literally has to get up and walk away. Uh, sports reporter, he has to get the notes. Uh, questions at the White House, totally prescripted. Ryan Seacrest, Joe Biden looked like a glazed donut. And now, Jimmy Kimmel, Democrat super donor, guy who literally every monologue is against Trump, comedian. Joe Biden goes on his show and it goes so poorly that Jimmy Kimmel has to emergency hit the red button and cut to commercial. Why we don't talk about more about that? that this, this is why you tune into this show, because we like have this deep encyclopedic knowledge of these moments. We catch them all, okay? With a Pokemon. Bang, bang, bang. Gotta catch them all. Here's the here's this one. It's so cringe. Watch. No so, question. So there's about a it. lot of major things we've done. But what we haven't done is we haven't been able to communicate it in a way. That is, uh, um, let me say it another way. Well, see, that's kind of perfect. Yeah, well, we haven't been able to communicate But it look how way. the press has changed. Mm -hmm. Look how the press has changed. It has changed. Oh, listen, it's, I, it's, I get it. I know you get you overstand it. Yeah. You don't just understand it, you overstand it. <laughs> but here's the deal. One of the things is that it's very difficult now to have a, um, even with, with notable exceptions, even the really good reporters, they have to get the number of clicks on on the on nightly news. Mm -hmm. So instead of asking a question, anyway, it just everything gets gets sensationalized in ways. That, but I'm convinced we can get through this. We have to get through it. And one of the things, look, I'm going to take a break, and then we'll talk a little bit more. I don't, if you don't mind. You. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have some of those commercials. I, 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 I we have some biracial you. commercials we need to. Show. <laughs> How embarrassing. Like, at what point? We should have done a cringe alert for that one, ALX. We should have done the cringe alert. Like, at what point? Like, at what point do you just, like, start to feel like the guy 
who's like the old doddering uh, nursing home activity hour guy who's like standing in the corner trying to play tic-tac-toe, trying to like find the jukebox that doesn't exist. Like you just feel bad, right? And you'd feel bad if that's what Joe Biden was doing where he belongs in the nursing home, but he's not in the nursing home. He's running the damn country. Last I checked, the uh, language of the country was English. And so uh, English, mother effer, do you speak it? I try to swear, but it's like a great line, right? Quentin Tarantino movie, Pulp Fiction. English, do you speak it? No, Joe Biden doesn't. The beer brewed here, <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer in this final. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why it's coming. <laughs> say a lot of things about Joe Biden. So I'm going to do my best to simply quote this damn man. Beer brew here, er, 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 ber, beer brew here, earth rider, the Great Lakes. That's the quote. We've literally written it out before. Maybe we should get that clip with the follow the bouncing ball. Jerry, can we do the follow the bouncing ball on that clip? We don't have to do it for this show. But next time I play that, I want to see the letters. I want to see like the words he's saying and I want the ball to sort of bounce like they used to do in the, the old Disney sing-alongs. And let's follow the bouncing ball. Beer brew here, or hey, 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 beer brew here, Earth Rider, the Great Lakes. Is that you communicating with your lizard overlords? I don't know. It's not English. It's not English. Uh, just a week ago, Joe Biden demanded the voters send him back to Congress. <laughs> In Pennsylvania, I have a message for you. Send me to Congress so that I can support this right. And I promise you, if we take back Congress, we, we will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. You can see it. What if, like, what if, I tell you this, I, you know, I have a wife that loves me, okay? I'm like Joe Biden. If I did the show, if I did the show, and every time I tried to, like, have an, an independent thought, I went like this. Like you could see that my brain, like my the muscles in my brain were like pulsating and snapping, right? Because I can't like come up with a thought. And you see Biden doing that all the time, right? The twisted, like pain, like that twisted, harsh expression. Don't read too many of Hunter Biden's private text messages. But if you read them with the family doctors of the Bidens, you'll see that Hunter Biden regularly joked or explained that Joe Biden has dementia. He does this. Hunter Biden does this in his private text messages with the family physicians. He's like, Joe Biden, he's like, he's got dementia and he, we're trying to like fix, we're trying to fix his dementia. This is Hunter Biden. Like, I don't know why we don't talk about this. Apparently it's naughty to like talk about Hunter Biden's private text messages. Well, we have them. And Hunter Biden regularly describes this. You know who else describes it? Members of the White House. Here's a guy from uh, Joe Biden's National Security Council telling James O'Keefe on a uh, grinder date uh, that the only thing that's going to get ground to powder is uh, Joe Biden's frontal lobe here. What Biden is doing, I love his policies. I just, just seeing, just witnessing, it just looks, it's a bad look. I mean, he can't, struggles to talk. Yes, yes, it's, he's it's, no Barack Obama. Is he, is he going to be the, the nominee? Yes. And she will be the vice president nominee. Yeah, I don't... There was a debate about removing her from the ticket, but sadly they didn't. Uh, I agree with everything Biden is doing. It's just his cognitive ability. Like, I have yeah. a grandfather who has 91. Okay. And Joe Biden is worse than my grandfather who has dementia. Yeah. You know, he's sort oh, know. of walking like this, and he's sort of like... You know, and I, and I think that voters are going to look at that, oh, yeah, and it's going to hurt I us. I, I think that independents are going to look at that, and they're going to be like, I can't do that. But with him, I yeah, mean, I know. I know. he's got I know. dementia. Um, yeah, well, I don't think he has that clinically yet, Not yet. Um, but he's definitely slowing down. Well, my question is, are the people, like your colleagues or the White House or whatever, do they get it? Do they know that? I think that they probably do, but no one in modern history has ever said, like, we're not going to renominate the president for a second term. 
Mm-hmm. That just hasn't happened. Like, Do they know that he has those issues? I think so. But they're not I mean, willing the to say it. Shows it. And, they're not and willing to say it publicly. It seems- Interesting, ladies and gentlemen. The members of Joe Biden's staff say, and the best part of that, I mean, it's <laughs> James O'Keefe. The Academy Awards were just a few weeks ago. James O'Keefe should have won every every Best Actor uh, nomination. But the most telling part of that interview is Joe Biden has dementia, right? Well, maybe not yet clinically, the guy says. I mean, clinically, maybe just like we have kept him from being diagnosed with dementia, which is actually the, the biggest takeaway here. Because every time the White House doctor, every time there's questions about the White House doctor or a cognitive test, you see them all bristle and scream, shut up, Joe Biden's fine, right? And wh- how do you know something's infected? It, it hurts when you touch it, right? You, 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 you press on it and it hurts and you see the reaction and they tense up. You know that they know and we know that they know and they know that we know. And they're not going to do the test because they know what it would show. And so the best that they can do is cover it up. Final, final word on all of this, ladies and gentlemen, about covering this up is there is an important clip. It also comes from James O'Keefe that shows you exactly the lengths to which they will go to protect people like Joe Biden and people that just appeared on the stage with Joe Biden the multiple predators, the multiple predators who appeared on the stage with Joe Biden so that Democrats could just shovel money at them. Predators like Bill Clinton, known predators who had to pay out millions of dollars, obviously, to victims. And other predators, obviously, um, like Lizzo, (laughs) right? Democrats came to go squee and shove money into their pockets. Joe Biden on stage. Uh, The corporate press have worked and actively to protect these people and to shield them from criticism, uh, even when those people were doing crimes as bad or worse than what Joe Biden's doing to this nation. I mean, it's hard to think of worse crimes than what happened on on Epstein's island. Yet we have on tape, and it's amazing how it always goes back to ABC. ABC owns ESPN. ABC was the reporters at the White House. ABC uh, was Ryan Seacrest and New Year's Eve. And ABC is Amy Rohrbach uh, saying during a commercial break, fuming that she had the Clintons dead to rights on the Epstein pedophile ring. Now, she's never explained herself here. She just had to like send out a pithy statement and then she got fired, right? This reporter, but this reporter was the most respected uh, on-camera talent at all of ABC. And of all people, James O'Keefe was able to get this footage of her venting, fuming that ABC News stopped her from publishing a report that would implicate Bill Clinton in the world's uh, largest pederast ring and predator ring. Why the hell would they do that? Well, to obviously protect elite institutions of power. You can do whatever you want. And as long as the media is able to protect you and kill the stories about the evils that you're doing, including these evils, these little children. Well, I mean, at what point do you just straight up call it satanic? At what point do you just call it what it is? Demonic, right? It's why it's so important to fight for a free press in this country. Here you go. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, First of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, Then the palace, found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will say, oh, that we that also quashed the story. Yeah. And then um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. She told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton, we had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on 
to no avail, and now it's all coming out, and it's like these new revelations, and I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like, every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh my God. We, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago saying, like, aunt, like, we, there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. I had it all, and they killed it. And if you line up the timelines there, you'll find that they killed it just in time for Hillary Clinton to run for president. The last thing you'd want is in 2016, Hillary Clinton to run for president three years ago, right? That tape from 2018, and you want a big, giant Jeffrey Epstein story about her husband going back into the White House, little St. James moving from the Caribbean, Caribbean right back into the White House, okay? Just, just strip off the paint on Air Force One and put the Lolita Express on the side. Bill Clinton just taking it national. And so why'd they kill it? To help Hillary Clinton. Why do they hand scripts to their reporters? To help Joe Biden. Why do they gag Donald Trump in court? And why do no media companies or press talk about Judge Merchant's daughter hoovering up untold millions working for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the most egregious conflict of interest I've ever seen? I don't know. But I know somebody who is talking about it, ladies and gentlemen. Julie Kelly, one of our favorite, favorite investigative reporters, joins the show now. Uh-oh, Julie. Looks like uh, you have uncovered some very special information about why Donald Trump has been gagged from talking about Judge Merchant's family. Please, uh, can you elucidate for us uh, what exactly is happening here in New York? So this is Judge Juan Merchan. Merchan, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. He is the judge presiding over uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg's hush money, so-called hush money uh, trial against Donald Trump. There is the sketch of the judge right there. Um, the judge, however, is extremely conflicted because his daughter, Lauren, who, you know, Benny, they describe her as a child, you know, the judge's child, like she's six years old, but she's 34 years old. She is the president and partner of a digital media consulting firm called Authentic Campaigns. And she has raked in, she and her company, tens of millions of dollars since 2019, when it looks like the firm started, including people like Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, and Adam Schiff. So instead of stepping down this judge, who also is involved in other Trump-related cases, the Trump Organization trial, and also will be presiding over the trial against Steve Bannon in a few months, instead of stepping wow. down, he has remained on the case and is digging in his heels, not only issued a gag order preventing Trump from talking about potential witnesses like Michael Cohen, but ex expanded that gag order the other night to include his daughter, who is a well-paid, well-known, well-connected Democrat Party political operative. And now Donald Trump cannot post or say anything about her. It has nothing to do with the integrity of the trial protecting anyone. It is to protect and cover up uh, his daughter's uh, lucrative business dealings with Democrats. So we did... We covered this on the show, in the A Block of the show yesterday. We used your reporting uh, here on Declassified with Julie Kelly. The ties between Judge Mershon's child and Adam Schiff represented a major conflict of interest. New detail, millions that were paid starting in 2019. And I, I lived in D.C. for a long time. I, I know enough about how the operational elements of this fun, fundraising world works. You don't just pay some, like, th some 30-year-old millions of right. dollars fresh off, you know, fr fresh into the game. Right. That's not how this works, right? It's almost as though they were judge shopping and were like plowing money, knowing that this guy would be the person that was going to oversee the eventual lawsuits they would wish to bring against Trump, because obviously this is where his business is, right? In New York. That's right. And remember that um, 
Alvin Bragg's predecessor was looking into this sort of prosecution for years. And I decided not to move forward with it. And mm -hmm. Alvin Bragg then picked up the ball and he has. So Benny, you're right. Think about this. So Lauren Merchant right now is 34. So she was 29 years old when she became president and partner of this firm. And then all of a sudden she is earning an average of six figures a month from people like Adam Schiff and to buy digital marketing time and do digital media consulting. This is what's listed in Adam Schiff's campaign committee reports from 2019 and 2020. I'll tell you what, Benny, Adam Schiff's disbursement, and I went through 2,700 records between 2019 and 2020. 40% of the disbursements, 10.7 million, almost 40% went to authentic campaigns. Now, to do what? And recall, as you know, at the time, what was Adam Schiff doing in 2019? And he was preparing to impeach Donald Trump. And as I write in my report, and we could talk about, one of the people, individuals who Adam Schiff used as a witness, tried to turn against successfully his client, is Michael Cohen. Mm -hmm. who will be a prosecution witness in the hush money trial in this trial that um, Judge Merchant is presiding over. This is yeah. an egregious conflict that certainly should disqualify this judge, but he's not. And now he and his daughter are portrayed as victims by the media. It really is quite on its face, very similar to what's happening in Fulton County in the sense that the prosecution is going to bring in big bucks uh, by going after Trump. Like this is going to be a huge heyday for them. Mm -hmm. Like there's no doubt that I, I, under I understand the rat's nest of political fundraising. I lived in DC. It is so corrupt. It's so evil. It, if there's one thing that deserves probably hyper regulation. It is the amount of people that are able to grift and graft off of political fundraising. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's truly evil when you understand these functionaries, but it's also very lucrative for these people, right? Because so politicians are able to just shovel millions of dollars into the pockets of their friends, into the pockets of their allies, in the pockets of, for people giving them kickbacks, right? This is like something that happens all the time. And when you see something like this from, as you said, somebody who's in her 20s suddenly becomes president and you see the amount of money, right? Impeachment starts. You're looking at, you're looking at three quarters of a million dollars every month mm -hmm. that's being shoved into this judge's daughter's bank account. It just like, out of the blue. It just seems like they had planned this. They had like planned this the entire time. They, they were judge shopping. And now they're just using what is right now, it shouldn't be, legal means effectively to just enrich the guy's family in order to get the outcome they want. And the outcome they want is, and this is amazing. I can't, I would, I would never, never insult you, Julie. You're, you're like one of our top favorite <laughs> guests. We love you. But you're like on the same size as Michael Avenatti. Like, I cannot believe it. But Michael Avenatti this morning is agreeing with you, being like, how the hell is Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen able to go on every media, every media channel they want and talk about this and Trump ain't? Well, that's exactly right. And I mean, Benny, I've been on your show and you've been so good to me in covering my reporting. And as you know, we've talked about the conflicts with other judges in Washington, D.C., certainly the egregious conflict with the D.C. West attorney, Matthew Graves, and his wife, uh, all access passed to the Biden White House. But I'll tell you, this is really shocking. It is so brazen and in your face. And Benny, we have a real problem crisis in the judiciary because there has been no oversight of these judges. So whether you have a Judge Chutkin or you have uh, Judge Florence Pan in the appellate court, whose husband is a well-known Democratic Party activist in Washington, or certainly now you have this, it, they shove it right in our face and in Donald Trump's face because they know there's very limited recourse on this. Now, Donald Trump's lawyers filed a motion to recuse in May of 2023. They outlined Lauren Merchant and authentic campaigns. I think they said at that point, 70 plus million dollars that they had raked in from all of these top Democratic officials, including the Biden campaign. August 2023, Judge Merchant comes back and says, no, I don't need to recuse. This has nothing to do with my daughter. I'm staying on the case. So ultimately, who is responsible for the scrutiny that this judge, his daughter and her firm, who's responsible for that? It's Judge Merchant. He knows he should have stepped down. He didn't because to your point, this is going to be, if he is convicted, extremely lucrative for the Merchant family, especially his uh, daughter, Lauren. Yeah, we have this photo, uh, producer's grabbing it right now, uh, of her, uh, 
his daughter wearing these Kamala Harris campaign shirts mm -hmm. and like with this wine glass, right. And partying and celebrating Kamala Harris, like as a parent, I gotta tell you, like if, if my daughters are campaigning for somebody and if, if her avatar is our, the opponent in jail, which it is right. She has this avatar of Donald Trump in jail on her ex account. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect me to be some type of like judicial, uh, gonna weigh, gonna weigh this like judiciously. I'm not right. I'm going to be on the side of my daughter. So I should be off the case, right? If my daughter's wearing the campaign swag, I should be off the case. If this person's running against my daughter, because effectively this person's running against my daughter. Here she is with the Kamala Harris shirt on. Right. Is this not proof enough that the judge has got to be off the case? And not only in his recent gag order, expanding his gag order to include his daughter, does Judge Merchant show any sign that, yes, perhaps there is uh, an appearance of a conflict, perhaps there is an appearance that, uh, you know, that, that the Trump team could argue he should recuse because of his daughter, but it's unrelated, et cetera. He gives a temper tantrum in this gag order, he is italicizing words. He is fuming that anyone has put him or his daughter or her business under the microscope when he knew almost a year ago that this was coming. So this looks like a father's temper tantrum that his daughter, who is making millions of dollars enriching herself off of these Democrats, uh, this is not, this was not a judicial order. This did not, as he says, try to protect the integrity of the proceedings. This is a bully, like we've seen with these judges, a bully saying, this is my courtroom, nothing you can do about it, and I'm going to shut all of you up. Donald Trump, you can't say anything about Michael Cohen. You can't say anything about my family members. And if you do and you violate this gag order, I will take steps, which could include putting him behind bars for violating the gag order. That's yeah. what he is attempting to set up. Well, what father doesn't want to make his daughter's dream come true? And here's his daughter's avatar right now with Donald Trump behind bars. Now we book for this show. We do a ton of interviews on the show. Uh, I got to tell you, I doubt you would do an interview. I, I doubt you'd go on a show where the host or his family members has a picture of you behind bars. I, I don't think that you'd like feel welcome there, but that's just like a news hit much less like a, a, a court of law. What a, what kind of a joke, kind of a joke is the system right now? And it does seem, uh, you know, it does seem as though like there's gotta be a recourse here, right? I mean, how, how do you get a judge to recuse himself? It, do you really have to just hope for the better angels? Well, really strangely, and maybe this is something that should be changed is that it's ultimately up to the judge to decide to step wow. away. Now, as you know, Donald Trump filed a motion to recuse in Washington, D.C. for Tanya Chutkin to step down an Obama appointee who, as I have documented and report, reported, all of her anti-Trump comments that she has made in court in January 6th proceedings, and including suggesting he should be behind bars. Tanya Chutkin comes back and says, no, I'm not going to recuse. I'm not conflicted. I can be impartial, et cetera, et cetera. So it looks like, though, Benny, in light of the recent reporting and new revelations about Lauren Merchant's financial ties that Donald Trump's team signaled yesterday that they will come back and file another motion to recuse. I'm sure he will deny that as well. I don't know what the next step is. If you can appeal that, I believe that you can, um, but uh, I, I'm not sure if that's something they're going to pursue. Yeah, there really should be some time. Uh, there really should be something above that. I mean, because obviously, if the judge is then corrupt, then you wait for the corrupt judge to say I'm corrupt. I, it's not going to work, right? Uh, Jack Smith is losing his mind. I wanted to cover this. Down yeah. in Florida, a very different judge, Eileen Cannon, uh, with a Trump case. And Jack Smith is like uh, having a, a spaz attack. I know you were waiting for this yesterday. <laughs> can, you, can you tell me what's up? Right. So again, a double standard. So we now have the same legal eagles, Andrew Weissman's of the world, et cetera, you know, defending Judge Merchant and condemning Trump for attacking his daughter. Now today, they are actually supporting this extremely rare move that Jack Smith threatened today because he didn't like Judge Cannon's proposed jury instructions. Now it is well within the purview of a judge. A judge ultimately decides what the instructions to the jury will be. She has asked now Jack Smith and the defense, Donald Trump and his two co-defendants, Donald Trump, 
two in a classified documents case to propose draft jury instructions. How are you going to instruct jurors to discern guilt for the 32 counts violating the Espionage Act? Because Jack Smith didn't like that, he now is threatening to file a mandamus with the appellate court. To my knowledge and other recording, this has only happened six other times in history. That means they will tattle to the appellate court and tell the appellate court to direct Judge Cannon how to proceed with these jury instructions. I mean, this is how outland, and you have now the Andrew Weissmans and Barbara McCord and all of uh, Barbara McQuaid all supporting this saying, oh, it's about time. This judge needs to recuse. They have been calling for her recusal since she was assigned to this case. I've got a big piece up today on Real Clear Investigations, the details of bad blood dating back to after the raid at Mar-a-Lago. They've been calling for her recusal simply because she is not siding with the government on every request that they make. Now, Benny, we that's sort of what a judge should do. The judge is there to protect the rights of the defendant, make sure that the government is not overreaching because Judge Cannon is actually doing her job. These same people defending Judge Merchant and Judge Chutkin and Fannie Willis, whoever, are now demanding that she recuse again because they don't like her suggestions about how the jury should be instructed to uh, to determine guilt in the Espionage case, Act case. Just the hypocrisy knows no boundaries. So I like as somebody who just approaches this very simply and brings on experts like yourself to talk about it, and here is the piece that you've written up today, Eileen Cannon, Portrait of a Judge in a Fractured Double Reality of American Justice. Please, everyone, always read Julie Kelly. It is, she is sharp as a tack, and nobody has, <laughs> has seen more from the inside of the courtroom than actually like gone through the proceedings. We talk about it from like outside. Julie Kelly is in the machine. But since you are in the machine, uh, and since we covered the Robert Hur testimony live for like 10 straight hours on the show and we listened in and we were like kind of blown away mm -hmm. by how Robert Hur, even though he was told by Merrick Garland what his conclusion was going to be, was quite gloves off with the fact that Joe Biden was illegal in his handling of classified documents, made mm -hmm. profit off those documents. And he straight up admitted that and shared yeah. it so that he could write books and stuff mm -hmm. and make millions of dollars. Who knows who else he shared them with, but at least the ghostwriter. Uh, it, what, how, why out of that way, the fact that Joe Biden didn't get prosecuted for having documents in seven different locations that he stole from the government mm -hmm. and probably stole by shoving them down his pants. We had a senator come on the show say, the only way you get documents out of a skiff is you shove them down your pants. You, mm -hmm. you literally have to steal them yourself because staff can't go into the skiff. So Joe Biden must have literally been stealing documents from the federal government by shoving them uh, somewhere. And how, how does that weigh on this case? Can you, can you explain that for us? Well, I have another piece. So um, I was in the courthouse on March 14th in Fort Pierce, Florida. You have to go there. There's no audio video access. You can't even take your cell phone into the courthouse. But I've been to the, there three times in the past few months to follow these um, proceedings. And the March 14th hearing was 48 hours after Robert Hur's public and congressional testimony. Mm -hmm. And I called him the elephant in the room because it was very clear that Judge Cannon was aware of the testimony. She brought up the her report. She pressed the government, Jack Smith's um, two pro lead prosecutors who were there on March 14th, to confirm that no former president or vice president had ever been charged under the Espionage Act language, which says unauthorized possession of national defense information. Benny, to your point, we know from the her report uh, and that's only what we know that he produced. Who knows what they were doing, moving boxes and moving files around in the um, Penn Biden Center? Uh, who knows where all of these other documents were? They weren't they didn't get, you know, three years worth of security footage from Mar-a-Lago like the DOJ did. They didn't get that security footage to see who took what and who who destroyed it or what these papers actually were. So she is very aware of the double standard here in the government refusing to prosecute Joe Biden or Mike Pence or anyone else who has caught, who has been caught or admitted that they had these documents. 
And to your point, there is still a selective vindictive prosecution motion to dismiss by the defendants, Donald Trump, uh, that she is still uh, considering. She's also still considering motion to dismiss on the Presidential Records Act, which is the thing that's sort of at issue now with these jury instructions. I know there's a lot to it. I hope between what I wrote at Real Clear Investigations and, and Declassified and what I'm explaining here, explaining here uh, to bring some clarity. But Judge Cannon is very aware, Benny of the double standard, and she is holding Jack Smith's feet to the fire, and the bad blood that started uh, in August of 2022 is now spilling over in, in a very public way, and uh, this is only going to get uglier, but she is the judge, and if they are going to defer to judges' decisions everywhere else, then they better honor hers as well. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's Tell you what, man, it's not looking great from the legal perspective. It was, it was, it seems like uh, it was going to be Doomstown about a year ago, and all of, all of these cases are just right. falling to pieces. I mean, am I wrong? Is any of them going to see trial before the election? The Alvin Bragg case, maybe? Is that it? Right. So the Alvin Bragg Clay case is scheduled to begin that trial on April 15th. It does look like that's going to be moving forward. They are still debating. Uh, there was an originally a May 20th trial date here in Southern Florida on classified documents. That was delayed because of what was happening in Washington in the January 6th indictment and also the Alvin Bragg case. So that trial date is now off the calendar, but they're sort of figuring out uh, when that could go to the trial, either July or August. Um, and so it looks like now the least likely one to go forward before the election could be the January 6th uh, indictment in Washington, because as you know, Benny, we, we've talked about the Supreme Court will hear oral arguments on the presidential immunity question April 25th. Everyone has to wait until the Supreme Court comes back to resolve that question. If the Supreme Court says, no, a president is not immune from criminal prosecution, they can move forward in Washington, but that's going to take months to catch up. So it does look for now, shockingly, that the Alvin Bragg prosecution will be first and classified documents uh, could very well be next. But Judge Cannon will be very mindful of the trial schedule in New York. And now since it looks like if it starts April 15th, it goes through, say, the end of May, which is what the defense now is telling Judge Cannon. Um, you know, that takes Donald Trump in, and she's very protective of making sure that Donald Trump can be part of all of the proceedings. So then that could delay, you know, what's what's happening there. It's a very complex case to begin with since it does deal with classified documents, national defense information. Uh, so this will only prolong that. That, of course, is the government's fault, Jack Smith's fault, not Judge Cannon. Uh, because, of course, Jack Smith decided to bring two criminal indictments within a matter of two months uh, last summer against uh, Donald Trump. So he is the one who's created this mess, not Judge Cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish for a encyclopedic knowledge of <laughs> How everything did this happen? that has happened, How did I get here? that is I, I don't know, but we're thankful for it. And we, and we, we, we've seen this on X. Apparently you had a tennis injury. So we really appreciate, we really appreciate you. No, you look, no, you look great. You look fantastic. You look absolutely great. Yeah. Uh, tennis injury apparently. So we thank you obviously for, uh, for, for being here with rounds of tennis in between hopping courts for yep. reporting on, on all of this. If you wish to follow, Julie Kelly, I cannot encourage you enough. Go to her ex account where she's posting all of her pieces, probably the best place to really find the nexus of what she's doing and also get the hottest, hottest of takes 600,000 Americans can't be wrong. Following Julie <laughs> Kelly. Thank you so much again for your insight. Thanks, Benny. Really appreciate it. Godspeed. We, we admit Ladies and gentlemen, that we need help on these things. I'm not a lawyer. These legal issues are complicated. The best that we can possibly do is obviously like bow our heads and invite on the experts to talk about all of this, right? And elucidate for us what's truly happening. Although there is something, there is something that we can read, which is the polls. And ladies and gentlemen, we got our election update here. This is a good one. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I just love it. 
I love that stinger. I, I, Joe Biden, the body cast is just so perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, brand new polls show Donald Trump is topping Joe Biden in all the swing states. And it is quite a dominant performance. Of course, these are polls that are being taken in April, March, right? Presumably these polls were done in March, but the new Wall Street Journal poll finds that Trump leads Biden in six of seven swing states and is doing so in quite, quite dominantly, quite frankly. Um, what are they going to do now? Well, they're going to freaking panic. All right. Panic, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the data. Wall Street Journal came out with last night. Today's paper, you can pick it up and see for yourself. These are the magnificent seven, as we call them, or I call them anyway, right? These are the seven battleground states where really this election could be decided. Might give or take one or two over the next seven months. But right now, margin of error in this polling is plus or minus four points. So everything you see is within the margin of error. And that's why they are battleground states, because they are, in theory, too close to call. North Carolina, though, Trump has an eight-point edge. Arizona's at five, Nevada at four, Georgia three, Pennsylvania three, Michigan two. And the Wall Street Journal, they find only Wisconsin among the magnificent seven battleground states that Joe Biden has an edge at plus three points. Let's come over here one moment here and find out in the battleground states what's driving your vote. Now, if you were with us in the last hour at 9 o'clock, we talked about the economy. We talked to two voters, one in Michigan, one in Wisconsin. 56% of those voters' decisions say the economy over the past two years, not four, but two years, has gotten worse. And that's driving their vote right now, according to the polling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very salty clip for you because that that is how Fox News covered this new polling. And... Morning Joe is making sure that they have their coffee, and you should be drinking your coffee out of a sweet brigade mug here, with the salty tank firing a salty tank shell, which is what this coffee mug is. Uh, Morning Joe's having their coffee with a seasoning of salt. I almost dropped it. Okay, got it. Ladies and gentlemen, our salt that lived for the day, please make sure that you are putting your salt into the face of... Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski, salt their coffee for Morning Joe. Salt that live on this show. Leave the salt in the comment section. We put it up on screen. Morning Joe having a sweet sodium bomb on these new polling numbers. Let's go. <laughs> According to the new numbers from the Wall Street Journal, Trump leads Biden in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, North Carolina, Nevada, and Pennsylvania by figures that are all within the poll's margin of error. In Wisconsin, the survey shows the two candidates tied at 46 percent each. The poll also finds negative perceptions about the economy remain a problem for Biden. 63% of swing state voters say the U.S. economy overall is not so good or poor condition, while 36% say it's in excellent or good condition. But when asked to rate the economic conditions in their own states, the majority of voters in five of those seven swing states say it's in excellent or good shape. Jim, as we always say, these are snapshots. The two things that I'm looking at right now uh, obviously, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan, uh, so critical. They're all very close. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by, again, I would never guess this five years ago, that Joe Biden continues to perform best in Wisconsin. That Wisconsin of all states seems to be a uh, state. Older white guys actually uh, aren't thrilled with what, what, what's happening uh, with Donald Trump. I like these. I like these clips. I like these salty clips because it does show you the quality of broadcasting that you get in the corporate media. Mm. It makes us feel good about ourselves. It makes us feel good about ourselves. Like, you know, we we've had a show on cable news, right? We've had a show on Newsmax. We've worked for Tucker. Like, I understand like how the corporate media works. Probably as good as anybody. And whoo, man, they're not sending their best. They're just not. Like watching Joe and Mika like 
struggle to read teleprompters every morning. We don't have a prompter. Like I, I just have like some bullet points in front of me. We just kind of like, we just kind of talk, right? And we have a lot more fun than they are in their salt fest, ladies and gentlemen. The salt shall flow. The salt must flow. The salt must flow. Jesus says, be salt and light unto the world. How, how, what, what happens to salt if it loses its saltiness? Don't lose your saltiness, ladies and gentlemen. The salt will flow even more as uh, the new numbers from the RNC, record-breaking RNC fundraising numbers, $66 million in March, ending March, with close to $100 million cash on hand, an unbelievable reversal from just a few months ago when Ronna McRomney was rom-jobbing the whole thing uh, straight into the gutter. So embarrassing. Now the RNC is flush with cash because people are like, thank God I can like trust the leadership of the RNC not to spend all their money on private flights and limousines and injections and flower arrangements. All the stuff, I mean, it was incredible, the list of stuff that the RNC was spending money on. And now the RNC is set to win. Uh, too little, too late? I don't think so. But man, uh, glad that leadership change happened now. I wish it had happened four years ago. Here's the new leader of the RNC talking about the new fundraising record-breaking numbers. We're very excited uh, that we, we got $65 million in the door in March alone, uh, with the president being a presumptive candidate, a presumptive nominee for only three weeks in that, mar in that month. We're excited about the fundraising that we've seen since he became our nominee. We've got a huge event coming up down in Florida this weekend. We're going to raise over $40 million additional dollars for it. So we'll have the resources to take our message from one end of the country to the other. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are very, very excited about the future. We think the future looks very bright. And we want to ensure that you are spending your money wisely. I mean, we think that obviously donating to ensure that your, your country is saved is a good use of your money. Also a great use of your money is buying gold. Uh, the stock market has been doing some crazy ass things. People are saying there's a huge bubble on the horizon. Gold, on the other hand, you can see back like 50 years, tick, 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 doing incredible and often outperforming the market as it is doing right now. Go and invest with my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold will take care of you, will ensure that whether you're converting a 401k or an IRA, that you are doing it with a company you trust and a company that can literally physically send you gold, which is kind of awesome. Didn't know, like, I did, didn't have any gold in my safe, right? Safe, the safe at the bank. But it sure is awesome. Didn't know I could do that. Allegiance Gold hooked me up, ladies and gentlemen, and they can hook you up too. Go to protectwithbetty.com today. 844-66-BETTY. Right now, get $5,000 in free silver with qualifying purchase. Don't get fooled by inflated stock values. Protectwithbetty.com today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, got a base bomb for you since we covered, since the entire show on Monday was a sort of a religious show, right, on the desecration of Easter by the so-called uh, Catholic Joe Biden, who should be excommunicated uh, by his faith, and Donald Trump saying that November 5th will be Christian Visibility Day. Ah, this is vintage Donald Trump from yesterday, based bomb of the day. Going to win the White House, and we are going to save our country. We're going to save our country. And what the hell was Biden thinking when he declared Easter Sunday to be Trans Visibility Day? Such total disrespect to Christians, and November 5th is going to be uh, called something else. You know what it's going to be called? Christian Visibility Day, when Christians turn out in numbers that nobody has ever seen before. Let's call it Christian Visibility Day, all right? I've just come from Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I was proud to receive the endorsement of the police. Can we get like a, can we get a uh, a presidential declaration? That's all you need, right? To, to make a day, like a certain day. So can we get that? Can we get Christian Visibility Day? <laughs> I, I will lead the charge. How do I, what do I do? What do I do? Who do, do I need to start like signing up petitions? I'll make a petition today. We'll promote it on the show every single day. 
How, how does this work? Let's figure out how to wor- make it work. And then when Donald Trump's back in the White House, first thing on his desk should be Christian Visibility Day, November 5th. I love it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you love our program and if you uh, love us and love the show being independent so that we can have these interviews and do these discussions and talk about this stuff and have a laugh, right, and play these memes, then I encourage you and I beg you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please sign up for the Benny Brigade. Go to BennyJohnson.com, sign up for the Benny Brigade. Uh, it's five bucks a month. And that keeps us independent and like helps the sh- like helps provide for the amount of producers and the uh, amount of content that we're doing uh, and keeps us stable ladies and gentlemen uh because the last thing that you want is a situation where we're told we can't talk about this thing or you can't cover that or you can't make that joke live on this show in fact i said let's do a follow the bouncing ball thing because this show because of your support employs a full-time memer his name is jerry You should follow him. Uh, Let's put up Jerry's account, by the way. Uh, But Jerry made a uh, made a made that in in due time because we have full time memers on this program for your personal enjoyment, and and that's thanks to the Many Brigade. So Jerry made the meme, the follow the bouncing ball meme of Joe Biden. Is it is it ready for uh, publication? Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Beer brewed here. (laughs) It is used to make the brew beer in this refinery. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why it's coming. <laughs> Come on. We say thank you. Oh, here we go. ALX has it. Here we go. The, the, we say thank you. So great job, Jerry. ALX has it. Petition to the White House that matters most to you. We the people. We'll do it. We're going to start it. We're going to do it today. We'll start the Christian Visibility Day. We'll do the Christian Visibility Day. We'll start the petition. Uh, why not? And we can p- we'll petition the White House. We the people, your voice in the White House. So why not? We'll make the we'll make the Christian like make November fifth Christian Visibility Day. Let's see if we can get a hundred thousand people to sign up for that. How based, how incredibly awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have Christian Visibility Day every single day on this program. Uh, we wish all the people of the world very the very, very best, but we uh, wish our audience to walk in confidence, joy, and victory. And that is why we have our verse of the day, Isaiah 41. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. Be confident that God is there for us. Yes, I know it, Joe Biden should lose 49 states. That's what happened to Jimmy Carter, right? <laughs> Jimmy Carter ran the same record of Joe Biden in 1980, he lost 49 states. Joe Biden, Joe Biden should lose 49 states. Unfortunately, the way that the elections go in this country, things have been really, uh, really rigged and meddled with so that there's only a few states that are kind of up for grabs. And so pray, ladies and gentlemen, pray and know that God, God's got our back, right? Fear not. The words fear not found 365 times in the Bible. That is one per day. So you should fear not. And if you do fear one thing in life, it should be God, actually. It shouldn't be Satan. It shouldn't be the DOJ. It shouldn't be the IRS. It shouldn't be Joe Biden. It should be God, actually. Fear God, because God is in control. Uh, And read his word and be uplifted. And march with us, a team and a band of happy warriors in our little salty brigade. The salt must flow. And we'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Thank you.